What's up guys, welcome back to Newswave. So it wasn't too long ago we were talking about the MIG switch, that being a flash cartridge for the Nintendo system, and now we're starting to see clone versions of that get released, or at least shown off, but there are still a lot of questions around some of these new cartridges, which we'll go over that here today. Also, we are going to be talking about Star Wars Outlaws. That did get that story trailer, as well as when it's coming out, but it's Ubisoft, so of course, there's some sort of catch to the, the whole thing. And then we're also going to be talking about Prince of Persia, the Sands of Time remake, as we had some new details leak out, and... It does look like they went back to the well for this one. So if you guys enjoy these videos, make sure you hit that like button. Helps out a ton. And if you're new here to the Spawn Wave channel, make sure you subscribe down below. And of course, members for the channel do get Newswave early and ad-free. If you would like to learn more about that, click the join button down below this video. And we're going to start today with a sale that is currently going on over with Amazon. And this isn't like the pre-order situation where things are getting just canceled outright. These are games that are just in stock and they're with Nintendo, which we could see this posted up over on Amazon, showing off a bunch of first party titles with Nintendo, physical copies, by the way. It's not very common to see a number of physical first party titles from Nintendo just on sale, especially at a 33% off. I mean, again, I, I know you, you see something like, oh, Tropical Freeze, that's $40, which is, isn't a huge discount for or Mario Kart 8 Deluxe, the game that's sold like a, a bazillion copies copies marked down to 40 or Breath of the Wild, you know, a launch title for the system that's down to $40. Still though, you have things like Kirby and the Forgotten Land that I think is a good title to pick up at that price point. Mario Odyssey. I mean, there are good quality games here or even Splatoon 3, which is still a ton of fun online. But I get it, a lot of these games are just a, a bit older, but that's what happens with Nintendo's games, and that's one of the reasons you try to take advantage of sales like these, even technically a 33% off drop going to $40. But also, physical copies, good to get for the collection now. Also, we had just talked about some emails that were sent from Sarah Bond that Windows Central was able to verify and even get responses from Microsoft over. And while a lot of that had to do with their, their plans for backwards compatibility and their legacy team coming back together, there was also some discussion very briefly around their next generation push. We can see this posted up by Windows Central. This is from Sarah Bond saying, we are moving full speed ahead on our next generation hardware focused on delivering the biggest technological leap ever in a generation. And we heard this on their Xbox podcast with their business update and how they were going to try to do something that we haven't seen before being the biggest technical leap ever. And I think... We hear that, we immediately go to graphics. Like, that that's the idea, right? They're gonna be more powerful, be able to do things we haven't before when it comes to these worlds that are getting built out. I'm actually thinking it's something different. Like, I feel like we are getting to a point where we have almost plateaued when it comes to noticeable leaps in visual fidelity. I mean, visuals can get better, sure, but it, it will never be like going from the PS1 to the PS2 or, or something like that where narrative-driven games are completely unlocked at that point with facial animations and stuff that you can do there with the PS2. Uh, I, I think this is going to be more in the realm of AI and and that sort of thing. And it's, it's hard to exactly wrap our minds around what they're getting at, but it doesn't seem like it's going to be too far off. A couple of years, and they'll probably start showing off and talking about what their plans are for potentially holiday 2026. Oh, and we did get an update on Stellar Blade's development status because there was one thing we hadn't necessarily heard yet. That was the idea that it was fully done. Well, they went ahead and fixed that. We can see posted up over on X where they say we're a little late with this post. They've gone gold. There's the team there all excited because Stellar Blade, of course, is coming out here in, in a few weeks, April 26th. And after playing the demo, I'm really looking forward to this one. I think it's gonna be a lot of fun to go through and de definitely played a bit different than I was expecting going into the demo, but I had a blast with it, especially after I figured out some of the mechanics around parrying and dodging at the right time. It all kind of fell into place and clicked for me. So yeah, I'm on this one, day one. Good to see that it did go gold, you know, ahead of release. So looking forward to it. And guys, with some of the quick news out of the way, let's get into the bigger stuff. Let's start right away with these Nintendo Switch flash cartridges, which we at first saw the MIG Switch that became very, very interesting online as to how that would work. And 
how this would maybe play into what Nintendo is doing online currently, where they're going after things like Yuzu, and obviously they crack down heavily around the idea of piracy, and I mean, you see the MIG switch, and it's like, okay, that could have some issues there for Nintendo, depending on how things go, especially with the idea of some of these games just being distributed online and could get different games and Switch systems potentially banned from online play if some of these uh, unique identifiers started just matching up. Well, now we are seeing apparently other flash cartridges just kind of break onto the scene, but I do have some questions around these. So we can see this posted up over on X. This is from Unlock Switch. I guess that's just what the this thing's going to be called, saying, yes, we have hacked and cloned the MIG switch. Today we're improving it and we'll present our evolution to you shortly. Our solution, our, our solution unlock switch is 100% compatible with all Nintendo Switch consoles up to version 18.0.0. Stay tuned. They have some images here of what looks like a, a custom PCB, I guess, with unlockswitch.com there at the top. And, and they've also etched unlock, uh, unlock switch on the different chips. And we can see the slot there for a micro SD card. This, of course, just being that cartridge that'd be in case in plastic. Although, when you look at the, the cartridge they have here itself, it does look very much like a MIG switch with a different sticker on it. So, people are trying to figure out if this is legitimate or not. And I think there, there was even a video that was showcased as wololo.net uh, dot did showcase this a bit with some of the updates. And it still has that green LED on the top, which again, very much reminds me of the MIG switch, seems to also operate the exact same way, which is odd because I feel like if you were going to clone the MIG switch, you would work to maybe solve some of the problems that have been brought up before you bring it to market. Like the idea of having to cycle through all these games by taking the cartridge out and then putting it back in, even a simple button to make the system think you've ejected it would be much better than just having to push the cartridge in and out over and over again, that could wear out that cartridge mechanism inside of the Switch, especially if you have like 60 games in there and you're on number three and you want to get to 58. Well, you're going to be popping the cartridge in and out over and over and over again a bunch of times. But this is certainly something Nintendo does not want to see is where this sort of thing really explodes online and becomes its own market. Because if these start really flooding onto the internet and are very, very easy to get, that could cause some issues when it comes to, well, yes, I know people will say piracy, but really these different cartridges, the way it works, you dump your own cartridge that has like unique token attached to it. And let's say you're just renting these games, for example, and you're, you're technically dumping them onto your PC and then someone else gets it. It's an online game like Splatoon 3. Well, if those get matched up, you could actually have the Switch banned completely then from online play, and you may not even realize it because you bought a used game legitimately, but it's maybe been dumped two or three times by someone else. So there are a lot of concerns in that regard. Now, for Nintendo, obviously they're at the end of this generation, but what if the MIG Switch or this Unlock Switch work on the next generation device, as we assume right now, if it's backwards compatible, would also accept the, the standard cartridges from the Switch, similar to the 3DS taking a DS game, well, that would mean these flash cartridges would most likely work unless they figured something out in the, the system software, the firmware, that would basically block this. But still, I am interested in this for no other reason than even, I, I haven't gotten my MIG Switch yet, so maybe I can check out the Unlock Switch if it's more readily available. And I'm not necessarily alone in that as there are many people who ordered their MIG Switch from different distributors and have not gotten it at all. So it, it was a disaster, I would say, just having these MIG Switches sold to people online because it's just, it's scattered all over the place. So who knows, maybe Unlock Switch can figure that part out over anything else, just, you know, actually selling and getting these out to people. I guess we'll see. Next up, let's talk about Star Wars Outlaws as we did have the official story trailer release yesterday. It gave us our release date as well as what you'd figure with Ubisoft, a bunch of different editions of the game to buy that go upwards of $130. But we'll look at some of the details with those. First though, you can see the trailer here. And if you're unaware, Star Wars Outlaws tells an original story set between the events of The Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi. As I mean, in the story trailer, you see Jabba the Hutt there, they go to their palace and stuff. So there are familiar scenes, I'll say, from the, the original trilogy in there for fans. And this follows scoundrel Kay Vess and her companion, Nyx. And again, they showed off all different environments and places I guess they'll be visiting. And 
some limited bits, I guess, of like in-engine combat. And it wasn't like, hey, we're going to sit down and play this for a while. Maybe that'll come later on. But we did find out that the game is coming August 30th. So, okay, a, li a little earlier actually than I was expecting. I thought this would have been maybe a late September or October release. So eh, October 30th, again, not bad there. But of course it's Ubisoft. So there has to be some sort of catch and it caused uh, quite, quite, some, quite a bit of controversy online. So if we take a look over on their website, they have the standard edition, the gold edition, and the ultimate edition. The standard edition is the base game and the Kessel Runner bonus pack that is $70. The Gold Edition is the base game, Kessel Runner bonus pack, three-day early access, and season pass. The Ultimate Edition is everything we just talked about there, along with the Rogue Infiltrator bundle, the Sabak Shark bundle, and the digital art book. The big thing people are looking at is like, okay, it's another one of those situations where the game could come out on the 27th because it's a single player game. It's not like, oh, well, there's online servers and maybe they'll get hit really hard if it, if it comes out that time. They want some, you know, a few days to get everything sorted out, but they're still selling it to you for, as you can see here, I mean, what, $40 more at $110? Single player, yeah, I, they're playing into the idea of FOMO or just wanting to get in first and start playing through the game. And of course, this would also tap into sort of the, the Star Wars fandom. So that, I guess, in Ubisoft mind is, well, we might be able to get this, get really get one over on everyone here. And they're not alone. This is a common trend that we've really been seeing over and over and over again in games for actually a while. I mean, since I think with the Xbox One generation, it's been a while. The Xbox One and the PS4 generation had a few of these. Now, the other aspect of this is the physical copy. If you look all the way at the bottom, there's a little box that says internet required to install the game. They did this with Avatar where there was like a patch or something you had to download to activate it. That was weird. But we've also seen this with other games where it's, it's just the file size itself is just larger than what the disc can handle. And the publisher doesn't feel like shipping it to discs. I, I, like Jedi Survivor was what, 150 gigabytes. And I mean, the Blu-ray is not going to hold that much. So you have to download part of it. We see Call of Duty just gave up on all of it, right? Oh, you got a 70 megabyte file that's on the disc. You download 200 gigabytes. That's just the way it goes. At least with something like Final Fantasy Rebirth. They put two discs in the in the package and it's like, okay, it's all here. But then they end up pushing a bunch of patches that work to smooth out different issues in the game that people realized. But when I look at something like this, I just I don't know what the point is necessarily of buying it physically. I, I guess you still retain some value if you're gonna trade it in or sell it down the line. But if those servers say go offline at some point, maybe you let's just say in the far distant future, Ubisoft is gone and you can't download part of the game or the patch that would activate it. It's, it's just, it's this weird middle ground. And it's like, look, if you're going to do this, you might as well just go all digital and just say, we're just doing a digital release. That That's it. It's, it's just, it's a strange thing to ship in this state, but that's just kind of where we are. We're at this in-between point where, I mean, really next generation, we're probably going to be seeing a massive swing to digital. And I wouldn't be shocked if we saw system ship without a disk drive completely. But Star Wars Outlaws, I at least like what I'm seeing here. I'm interested. It's a different kind of Star Wars game where a lot of them we play and we have lightsabers and stuff. I don't mind seeing kind of this aspect of the universe where you play as an outlaw, right? Uh, so interesting. I'll keep an eye on it. It's definitely going to be in a point where I think it's going to be very crowded in that August, September, October time period. Go figure, sort of leading up to the holidays. But if I can... I'll get, I'll hopefully get a chance to check it out and we'll see how it does. Next up, let's talk about the Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake. It was a few years ago that this trailer debuted and didn't go over well with how it looked and some of the character models and it didn't seem like the, that big push for a remake around what I think is still a classic game from that PS2 GameCube Xbox era. I mean, it really is a trilogy of titles then with uh, Sands of Time, Warrior Within, and then Two Thrones. But Ubisoft at least heard everyone and made some changes. And now it's with Ubisoft Montreal, who is a very talented studio and I think should be able to put out a quality product here. And in fact, it appears they're going back and just redoing the entire thing. Now, this was an exclusive from Insider Gaming. We can see this posted up. 
where they say Prince of Persia Sands of Time remakes overhaul also includes a more realistic approach, said one source. Everything has been built from the ground up, which includes a complete graphical overhaul, new animations and mechanics for combat and parkour, and much more. Starting from scratch has meant that the game has been rewritten, recaptured in mocap, and more. So, yeah, they basically scrapped everything we saw as... as uh, as Insider Gaming says, forget everything you know about the Sands of Time remake. When we do eventually see it again, it's just going to look like a completely new, different game. And I'm okay with that because it does seem like Ubisoft is serious at, at like taking a shot at bringing back Prince of Persia. There's another game that's going to be shown here pretty soon for Prince of Persia from the Dead Cells developers. It's like, oh, that's Okay, well, that, that would be a, a quality studio to put behind it, or developer to put behind a new Prince of Persia game. We just had The Lost Crown, which I thought was, is an awesome Metroidvania title. And they're putting serious, uh, really serious money behind Prince of Persia Sands Time Arena. It's not cheap to go back and redo all of this with Ubisoft Montreal. So uh, I at least like that they are taking this seriously. And I do hope Sands of Time Remake, when it does eventually come out, is that high quality product to at least give Prince of Persia a real shot in this current market. Here's the issue. All this that's being said here makes me think it's still going to be a while before we ever see it again. I'm thinking still several more years. Like this might be a game that closes out this generation, but here's hoping all the wait ends up being worth it. And in our last bit of news, let's talk about some comments from the Sabre CEO, Matthew Carr, in regard to the pricing right now of different big budget games at $70. We can see this is posted up in an interview with IGN, where he says, I think that as games become more expensive to make, the $70 title is going to go the way of the Dodo Bird. I do, I just don't think it's sustainable. Look, you remember the hype for Cyberpunk, which I think actually ultimately performed okay. But when the expectations are so high and so much money is put into one title, it's hugely risky for the company that's doing it. What if it fails? You remember what happened when Ubisoft a couple years ago, all their titles slipped out of the year, and then all of a sudden, they were in a completely, an entirely different place. It's hard to recover from that. I think the market is going to shift to development, which is not necessarily lower quality, but there's going to be an emphasis on trying to find ways to reduce costs. And yeah, that, that seems pretty obvious that the way that these budgets continue to inflate, eventually there's a breaking point and they have to decide, do we go to 80, 90, $100 games? Or do we just work to cut down on costs and figure out how to lower these budgets? without making it bl like blatantly obvious in the presentation of the title. And that's, I think the next big thing that these companies have to figure out is how to accomplish that. But I, at first I thought looking at these quotes and some of the stuff that they were saying, they were more or less pushing for, well, we got to go to 80 or $90. They actually seem to be going the opposite direction of, Hey, let's get back to some of those 40 or $50 games as they do point out hell divers Two being a great example of something like that, that, that middle ground, that, I guess, double A kind of game. Let's get back to that, to where we can have consistent flow of titles that sure, aren't big open world, 100 hour games. What if it's like a $40, 10 hour experience, but, but it's like a fun, interesting 10 hour experience. I'm all for that. I actually would like to see those because I think that is where a lot of creativity can come into the picture because the expectations aren't necessarily there for a project like that. You can try out some new stuff and see what happens. See what necessarily, just throw a bunch of stuff at the wall and see what sticks. And you can kind of get away with it for that $40 price point where the budgets should be significantly lower. So I do hope that eventually the market sort of corrects itself and it goes in that direction because I think really those can be some of the more interesting titles that come out each year alongside of sure the big budget $70, $80 experiences that cost hundreds of millions of dollars. I think there needs to be a balance there. And before we go to the comments of the day, where I take a look at the poll that I posted up yesterday, where I ask, are you expecting a Nintendo Direct this month? Wow, 79% say no, which I guess if you think about it, I mean, if it's not this week, next week, uh, you're starting to run out of time in April, 21% still think it's going to happen. I, I'm, I'm thinking about Nintendo's lineup right now. They have technically May, June, I mean, they have a couple of titles obviously thrown in there now and you figure they're going to have something maybe in the first half of June to really set up the second half and maybe start to hint at their next generation device. But they're going to have some serious questions thrown their way here in a few weeks with investors. And I am curious how they answer to that if there is no direct of any kind 
this month. I mean, they could do something a bit smaller. They could do an indie world. I, I'm trying to think of ways that they can just put information out there to really maybe hold off some of the, the, the different looks they're going to get from investors with their current lineup being... I'm not saying it's, you can look at Thousand Year Door and be excited, Luigi's Mansion 2 HD, be excited, Endless Ocean, but there's no really big title from Nintendo right now in the in the future at all. So I feel like they're getting ready to say something. I'm just curious how they're necessarily going to navigate it. And we'll finish up with the comments of the day. We'll start with this one here. This is from Venom who says, good time to remind people that the Pokemon Bank and transfer apps still work on the 3DS. If you want to bring them into home, better start doing so. They've been vague on how long that service will stay up. Yeah, I feel like they'll still give you some sort of heads up that's more than, hey, it's getting shut off tomorrow. I'd like to think they'll give a few months of advance notice from like the Pokemon company for a series that is that focused on the idea of trading and holding on to Pokemon from legacy games, right? And bringing them up to newer titles. But still, you're right. It's definitely a good idea to start looking into that now, way ahead of any any kind of shutdown being even mentioned. So I'd take a look at that as soon as possible. And then we'll go over to a question from the members video. This is from Ruckus who says, random question. Do you do the research for these videos yourself or do you have a couple people helping you out? So the research side is mostly myself because I, I feel like I should understand what exactly is going on here with these different topics. The editing side, Evan does quite a bit of that and I think he does a very good job of it. But the research stuff, I just, I enjoy doing anyway because I like really being in the weeds for a lot of the gaming information and news cycle. It's it's never ending, sure, but I don't know. It's just For me, it's a lot of fun to try to at least be as much in the know as possible. I can't hit everything because there's, there's legitimately a lot of stuff out there, a lot of genres, a lot of avenues for news, but I like to think I gather as much as possible and jam it into 20 or so minutes. But yeah, mostly it's myself spending the day going through and checking out different topics. And ladies and gentlemen, that's going to do it here for Newswave. If you enjoyed this video, guys, hit that like button. If not, hit the dislike. Leave comments down below about everything we talked about here today. Where's the unlock switch or the make switch? How many more of these clone cartridges do you think are going to just start popping up online? And then also, what about Star Wars Outlaws? Are you interested after seeing that story trailer? And how do you feel about these, like the three day early access for these different games that we've been seeing over the last several years? Oh, and then Prince of Persia Sands of Time remake. Seems like they're starting from scratch. Do you think they're gonna be able to pull this one off and how much longer until we're gonna see it again? Thanks guys for watching and I'll see you next time.